Castlevania. If ever there was a game franchise on the NES that made Sega fans green with envy, it was this one. Having played the original trilogy on the NES, it was automatically assumed by my friends and me that the Genesis would never see the Belmont family cracking whips against Dracula, and those assumptions seemed to be confirmed when the stellar Super Castlevania IV debuted on the SNES in 1991. This was an awesome game from beginning to finish, with perhaps the best gameplay in the entire franchise, and it made getting an SNES mighty tempting. At the time, the Genesis had some great titles, but there was nothing that could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Konami's Vampire Slaying series. We were cruelly baited by the Master System and Game Gear title Master of Darkness in 1993. Developed by Sims and released by Sega itself, it was a great clone, but it was plagued by one major problem. It wasn't a Genesis game. Let me see if I get this straight. Those who owned a bulky, battery-eating handheld that few people bought or a discontinued last-gen console could play something like Castlevania, but those with the brand new 16-bit Sega system that was overtaking Nintendo had to do without. Awesome. Now, it wouldn't be until 1994 that Konami would bless Sega's little black box with its own installment in the Castlevania franchise. Bloodlines, or the new generation as it's known outside of America, finally gave Sega Files a taste of what Nintendo gamers had been enjoying for almost a decade. The question that reigned in most people's heads upon its announcements was whether or not it would stand up to its Nintendo brethren. To me, at least, it does that and more. Bloodlines was almost a surreal experience when it was first released, and I couldn't get used to seeing that famous logo next to the big red Genesis sidebar. This was really Castlevania on my Genesis. And the box art was even done by the same guy who did most of the other Konami games at the time, like Castlevania 3 and Contra 3 The Alien Wars. There was no denying it. This was the real deal. It wouldn't be a Castlevania game without Dracula and his nemesis, the current member of the Belmont clan. In a surprising move, however, Konami decided against going with Faithful Simon or any of his close relatives. Instead, Bloodlines gives us two different heroes from which to choose, John Morris and Eric Lacard. It also tries to tie the series in with the original vampire tale, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Yep, you heard that right. According to the instruction manual, John Morris is the son of Quincy Morris, the Texan vampire hunter who dies during the final battle with the Count in Bram Stoker's novel. Supposedly, the Morris family is descended from the Belmont clan, and John has inherited the Vampire Slayer Whip to continue the family business. He brings along his childhood friend Eric, who brandishes the mother of all lances. The duo quickly finds itself facing off against Dracula's niece, Elizabeth Bartley, and the battle begins anew. Supposedly, all of this stems from the American localization, as the Japanese and European releases make no mention of a connection to the original novel. Bloodlines takes place across six branching stages all over the continent of Europe, from Germany to France and Italy. And no matter which path you choose in each, you're going to end up at the same boss. The game is a traditional Castlevania, which I prefer to the style introduced by Symphony of the Night, otherwise known as the Metroidvanias. And it's also the fourth game in the series to feature multiple paths. Each stage is populated by all the nightmare creatures you'd expect, like Medusa heads and skeletons but there have been some minor changes to the items you can collect. Hearts have been replaced by jewels, which are still used for special weapons though. You can still power up your whip as well, or a lance, this time by collecting coats of arms, and health is replenished by eating meat found in the walls. The axe, boomerang, and holy water all return, as does that single special item that kills everything on screen. In this case, it's a mirror. The gameplay is very solid and spot on for fans looking to jump in and play. John can swing his whip diagonally, but he's not as agile with it as this SNES Simon is. Seriously, I don't know why every single vampire hunter since Castlevania 4 doesn't swing his whip in eight directions. It's as though Simon threw away the manual or something, thereby depriving his descendants of the art of eight-way fighting. At least John has some vertical attack here. And it's better than just having to jump and whip to hit high enemies. He can swing from it too, so he's not a total loss. But as far as I'm concerned, the real way to play is with Eric. 
His Alcard Lance can reach places no whip can, and he can even spin it as a shield to repel enemy attacks for a short while. What makes him so much better to use is the fact that he can jump up to three times higher than John can, and even damages enemies while he jumps. Even better, Eric can attack diagonally or even straight up. The length of his lance makes him the better of the two characters by far. At least here, size does matter. It may seem a bit weird to play a traditional Castlevania and not use a whip, but trust me, it's so much better. If I had to complain about one thing about the gameplay, it's that it has the same flyback when you're hit crap that all the other Castlevania games have. Honestly, I think this is the true curse of the Belmont family, far more so than having to kill vampires every hundred years. Nothing pisses me off more than getting to the end of a level only to be knocked back off a ledge by an enemy. At the very least, you have to climb all the way back up, but usually, you're just dead. Rather than simply port an existing game, Konami gave us an entirely new title built from the ground up. Though the Genesis lacks the large color palette of its rival, it actually benefits in this particular instance. Castlevania is a dark and spooky world, and the dark colors and bloodlines serve to make that world stand out. The visuals are a lot more macabre than in those of Super Castlevania 4, and there's a lot more blood. In fact, there's blood all over the place. I know Dracula is a vampire and everything, but with the amount of plasma flowing around his castle, I really don't think he needs to hunt anyone. This guy has blood all over the place. There's a blood buffet right in his backyard. Seriously, there's blood dripping from the lamps, from the ceilings, there's even a part where the blood just fills up from a fountain. Now some people might not like the dark graphics, but I don't know what they'd expect from a game that deals with hunting vampires. It's supposed to be dark, and what Bloodlines lacks in color, it makes up for with special effects. Reflective water, sprite warping, and a slew of other neat features bring a nice touch to the presentation. I was impressed with Konami's excellent use of effects in Rocket Knight Adventures and Contra Hardcore, and that tradition continues here. The sound to the Castlevania games has always been one of the defining traits of the series, and Bloodlines delivers here in spades, though well, not in the way you'd expect. Once again, Konami decided not to recycle anything from previous installments, so the remixes of classic themes have been kept to a minimum and don't even appear in the game unless you use a special code. You can at least hear them in the sound test, though. The score for Bloodlines was done by Michiru Yamane, the same person responsible for the brilliant Symphony of the Night soundtrack. Yamane pushed the Genesis hard, making use of a plethora of different sounds to give the score that classic Castlevania feel. She did an excellent job too, in my opinion, as the original themes in Bloodlines sound very much like they belong in this game, and some of them would have eventually even be used in later releases. Basically, if you're a fan of the Castlevania games or just action games in general, then you'll definitely want to check out Bloodlines. No, scratch that. If you're a Genesis owner and have a functioning brain, you want to check this game out. It's a solid title in its own right, and it's definitely worthy of its pedigree. Being that this is the only game in the series to even appear on the Genesis, many people thought that this was a one and out deal for Konami. Kind of its way of saying to Sega, there, I gave you a Castlevania and a Contra, now I'm going back to the SNES. Given the amount of games that Konami released on the Genesis, including the incredible and exclusive Rocket Knight Adventures, not to mention games like Snatcher on the Sega CD, I don't believe this for a second. Konami hopped on the Sega train as late as it did thanks to Nintendo's fascist licensing policies, and by the time it got its rhythm going, 16-bit generation was virtually over. Nah. Bloodlines is no fluke. Konami has acknowledged its part in the saga by including its music in other Castlevania games, like in Castlevania Adventure Rebirth on WiiWare. Also, the star of the DS game Portrait of Ruin is Jonathan Morris, the son of John from Bloodlines, so there's no denying Bloodlines' place in the canon. I just like being able to play this baby on my Genesis, and with the volume cranked up, there's nothing like it. Now go find yourself a copy and get cracking, or lancing, I guess.